Hi, this is Todd Runstead. I'm Editor-in-Chief of Functional Ingredients Magazine and Ingredia, which includes the Nutrition Business Journal um, Group. We're here at the NBJ Summit this year. I'm here with Michael McGuffin. He is the President of the American Herbal Products Association. And, uh, and Michael uh, received uh, an award from NBJ for efforts on behalf of the industry. Congratulations. Thank you very much. You, uh, I, I've known you for a long time, and, and I know you just do quality work on behalf of the industry, so we're, we're pleased to present this award to you. I want to talk a little bit, uh, you know, starting from, from today and moving back, you recently had a dialogue with Senators Durbin and Blumenthal about GMPs. What did you talk about? Well, we acknowledged in the first place that we're committed as an industry to comply with the new GMP rule. Um, and that while we want to make no excuses about that, that it's important to put it in the context of a very complex new rule that the smallest companies are only two years into their compliance schedule. Um, what they wanted to talk about, and we we're happy to do that, is what can we as a trade association do to assist companies in coming into compliance? Is it more difficult today for a smaller herbalist to get into the industry than maybe it was 10 or 20 years ago? I got into the industry in 1980, and it was uh, not difficult at all. I got into the industry because I was impassioned. I got into making tinctures because I wanted to prepare high quality herbs. I think that that drive, that personal interest can still be sufficient to bring you into the industry to kind of set the stage for entry. The obstacles to entry are significantly higher now because um, I mean, just simple things, like we didn't have any facility registration requirement in 1980, and you do now, and if you're not registered, then you're on your face unlawful. Um, as soon as you start to encounter the GMP, it's a very real rule where you have to have significant knowledge, significant resources. Um, just numerous of the requirements are, the level of regulation of this trade is quite a lot higher than it was. Yeah. So are there sort of like two different sort of parts of the industry, sort of the bigger companies versus smaller companies, and the responsible industry versus what might be called the irresponsible industry? I'm not good at drawing those kinds of clear separations. There are certainly small companies, they all want to be big. Not, that's not entirely true. There are a lot of small companies that are comfortable being small. Um, but I think that the, the th the things that separate small and large companies other than their size are not all that significant. We all have to comply with the um, same regulatory issues and we're all compelled to make high quality products. So I don't pay too much attention to that. We welcome all of them. We have members with sales of less than half a million dollars a year on up to companies that uh, pay the highest level dues and uh, enjoy sales in the hundreds of millions of dollars. Um, the, and even the good company versus bad company dichotomy, I, I, I think there are very few bad guys. I think there are companies that haven't figured out how to meet their obligations, but I don't think it's from lack of caring about that. I think it's, it comes to be resource issues, and that's again one of the things that a trade association tries to do. We try to fill the gap for them. We try to provide training. We try to answer questions on their behalf. We, in a sense, provide a, a resource to them that they can't afford as small companies. But I'm, I don't find a lot of bad players. I know that's what the uh, mass media likes to talk about, and sometimes we get caught up in that language. But we're working for the good guys, and that's who we encounter. Yeah. So you know, APA has done a lot of of work to to serve its members. GMPs being probably the biggest issue. Um, and part of that was, you know, the, the, the flashpoint that was part of GMPs was the NDI um, uh, sort of kerfuffle that was over the past year. Part of that was ODIs. Mm -hmm. And so when you talk a little bit about how, what APA has done to, as far as creating an ODI list and, and just challenges that you've had in getting FDA acceptance with that. Well, we initially put together a list of herbs that our members had told us had been marketed prior to the passage of Deshaies in 1994. We submitted that list to FDA in 1995, about 1,600 plants. Uh, we then kept going in that we continued to get input from our members and we cleaned up the list. That became published as Herbs of Commerce, the 2000 edition of that text, which came to be about 2,200 plants. 
In the interim, what we have continued to do is to reach out to our members and, in fact, some of our own files um, to save some of those old records. So we're now at a stage where we're creating a substantiation file. Not only do we have the list of ingredients that people have told us were marketed prior to that date, we're obtaining old records um, to substantiate that. We also have the position that uh, the obligation, the, the burden is on the Food and Drug Administration, not the industry. We have an obligation to act if the ingredient is new, but there's not an affirmative requirement to have a 19-year-old piece of paper in order to sell chamomile. I can sell chamomile and if FDA thinks it's new, that's their obligation to assert that. Yeah. So as part of this sort of gamesmanship, is this sort of a hurdle or an issue in getting greater mainstream acceptance of botanicals? I'm talking both from a consumer level, as well as a health practitioner level, as well as sort of the establishment healthcare paradigm? I don't see consumers, professionals, healthcare establishment uh, thinking for one moment about new versus old ingredients. I think that issue is uh, irrelevant to, at that level. I think the term good manufacturing practice isn't in the vernacular, but I do think that that touches on uh, uh, an issue for consumers that they want to know that the products are well manufactured. They want to know that the products are clean, that the products are exactly what they say they are. Um, they're not going to call it GMP, but they expect a high quality product yeah. and FDA has defined quality pretty simply. It's you're, you made the product that you tried to make, you made the product that you claim it to be, that's what a quality product is. Yeah. And I think consumers do have an expectation of that and in fact, uh, we have an obligation to provide that. The NBJ Summit, Nutrition Business Journal as a, as a publication, as a, as a resource for industry thought leaders and, uh, and, and operators. Uh, no, no flirt, just fact. When somebody says to me, hey, I need to know something about the money, I say, NBJ, NBJ is the place to get the facts about the money. You guys do that, nobody else does that. And I, I met Tom, uh, I don't remember what year, but the year that he started expressing his interest in compiling information about the money. And his message was, nobody's done this. You're in an industry that's growing, we need to look at the money. Um, NBJ, from that moment, has been the primary resource for understanding the economics of this trade. And I rely on it. I advise others to rely on it. And the, as, as far as the summit, I mean, this is just a great meeting place. Uh, the events themselves are great. I tend to not miss any of them. The speakers are uh, well chosen. The content is always good. But of course, we know that the important part of the meetings, or another important part of the meeting is what happens outside of those. You know, the breakfast meeting that I'm able to have with uh, a member company or a potential member company, time a, a little more relaxed time with my colleagues than I can get hurrying through meetings. So there's a great value here for me to be here and for uh, numerous other OPA members to be here. Just finally, are, are there other issues that, um, that you can help the botanicals industry out with? I know GMPs is sort of like this big issue, NDIs is part of that. Is that kind of the big issue going forward through the next five years is making sure everybody is meeting those, that, that standard? Or are there other, other, other things that, were, that aren't related to GMPs? That I think those probably are the big issues. Um, there are, I think, emerging issues. Sustainability is a word that's used not just in our trade, but in an industry that still relies to some degree on some wild plants. Sustainability is a real issue. And we have member companies who are taking great steps to ensure that the product that they're obtaining from South America or Asia is obtained in a manner that ensures continued access. Even in North America, we're starting to work on uh, some research on OSHA, a plant that's of you know, not one of the high volume plants, but it's a wild harvested plant. We're paying a researcher from the University of Kansas to evaluate the impact of our harvest. So I think sustainability is a very real issue in an industry that uses plants. Some of the issues, rather than those large ones that you've mentioned, GMP, NDIs, or even the one that I brought up, sustainability, um, they're, in a sense, the large topics. What we notice a lot is that a company has a small question about a very specific. I got one today 
from a, a member company that wants to know about the proper labeling of a species of cinnamon. Well, we're going to stop and help them understand what the regulation is for uh, identification. It's not the the big picture question that I think you're asking yeah. about, Todd, but so much of sort what of day -to -day we day-to-day retail stuff. The day-to-day -day retail stuff, this member has this need. I take the time to uh, serve them in whatever way I can, or my staff does the same. Stephen Dentali comes in with a re review of some science, or Devin works on getting some uh, information on uh, uh, our structure, or Frank Lampy uh, pulls together some talking points on issues that companies are facing. So we try to answer whatever it is that our members need us to do. And yeah. it's that kind of effort on behalf of our members that we stay focused on. And that's why you won the award for efforts on behalf of the industry. Thank you very much. Thanks, Michael. All right, Good talk. Thank you. All right.